Happy New Year's, everybody. It's the end of 2022. And if you're listening to these audios and videos and you're anything like me, you're probably sitting back and thinking, well, (laughs) that wasn't one of my better years. Um, And we do what we tend to do, right? Or what we've always done is we look at the new year and what we're taught to do is make resolutions and this year is going to be a better year and maybe it will. Um, I, I, I hope that for all of us that we find peace and and peace in our journey whatever that looks like but I think hope is um, well actually I'm going to talk a little bit about hope because one of the things I wanted to talk about was I wanted to share some movie quotes Um, just I love movies and I love movie quotes and they tend to stick more than anything else for me there's a couple quotes that I don't think came from movies that are that resonate with me as well but I'll share those but I was sitting here again and kind of thinking about what do people tend to do on New Year's Eve as they make these resolutions for the next year. And, you know, in years past before I became sick, it might be things like I'm going to eat better, I'm going to sleep better, I'm going to be a better friend, I'm going to, whatever it was, right? Um, but I think for a lot of us going through this, we've made so many changes, you know, I, or at least I, I guess I'll just speak for myself. You know, I don't know that I could clean up my diet any more than I can. <laughs> I don't know that I could, you know, I mean, I've, I've really prioritized trying to figure out how to take care of myself. And while that's a wonderful thing, I don't want that to ever be a resolution again, because those resolutions tend to come and go and right. And it needs to be just a commitment. And for many of us, it became a forced commitment. Um, I never wanted to be I never wanted to know as much as I do about the vagus nerve, uh, histamine, um, cortisol, uh, my limbic system, um, supplements. I, I just didn't want to know this much, quite honestly, about it. Um, so, but it's okay. Life has brought me here, and and um, you know, I, I I'm a couple days late in posting a. A clip because I, as always, I have had a little bit of a crash since having a good couple of days over um, the Christmas holiday, which again, I'm extremely grateful for, don't get me wrong, but the snapbacks can be brutal and scary and very convincing, right? They always feel like this is the worst one and was I ever this bad or is this stuff new? And, you know, thank God I've got some people in my life that are like, nope, We've heard it 400 times before, not anything different, not anything new, but it, that's just how that works. So on this, you know, we have about, what, an hour and a half, two hours, I'm, I'm in central time before it's the new year. And so I thought I'd come on and just share a few movie quotes with you guys that inspire me. Uh, again, I'm a movie buff, or at least I was before I got sick. Now it's very hard for me to watch many movies, especially new movies. I can sometimes watch old movies, but sometimes that even gets me. I don't know if it's overstimulation or it's just a reminder of times past or I have no idea, but there's different reasons why I think watching movies is a little bit too much for me in this process at times. But but I'll, I'll name a few. And the one that stands out the most for me is from Rocky. From Rocky. Rocky Balboa says, nobody is going to hit as hard as life, but it ain't, it ain't how hard you can hit. It's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. It's how much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Sounds like Rocky, right? Nobody's going to hit as hard as life. I did not know that before this. Um, I was lucky in my life up until the time I got sick. I had certainly had some some tragedies and and losses and life stuff happen, but um, up until this really hit me, I don't think I would have really seen life as offering us a sucker punch. And again, I was lucky in that regard because I know there's plenty of people that, you know, whether it's benzos or other medications or, or, or losses or, you know, there's all kinds of things that people endure. And I've talked about some of these stories on my post before of that I would hear certain stories, certain tragedies and, and, and watch the resilience in people and hold them in mind. Well, before I got sick, I was kind of amazed by these stories. But I think Rocky's quote is important, right? Because we're learning that nothing is going to hit as hard as life. And life, it's hard right now for a lot of us. But again, it's not how hard 
you can hit. It's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. We're getting hit pretty hard. And our job is to stay vertical and breathing, right? And he says it's not how much you can take. It's it's how much you can take and keep moving forward. And a lot's being asked of us. A lot's being asked of us to stay vertical and breathing. A lot's being asked of us to remember um, what this is and, and not panic. Um, every five minutes wondering if it's something else or this time it's worse or, oh my God. Um, a lot's being asked of us right now. And... Um, we've got to kind of stay with it. And so another movie quote that I like comes from Mission Impossible. And he says, hope is not a strategy. And I don't mean to sound pessimistic with that, but I actually like this quote because it it kind of goes along with that Stockdale paradox that I'm always talking about. So remember, if you remember, James Stockdale was the prisoner of war in Vietnam for years and survived when so many of his comrades who were also in prison died. And when he came out and they interviewed him and said, how did you survive this? He said, you know, I didn't have like false hope. I wasn't saying to myself, I'm going to be out of this place by Christmas or by Thanksgiving or my kid's birthday. He would say to himself, I'm going to be out one day. I don't know when that day is. It's clearly not today. So today I've got to just survive. And so he had hope in, in the sense that he had this kind of radical sense of hope of I will be okay. But there was no time limit on it. There was no expectation of it. And he didn't limit himself to that, to where he would be let down. And he said, you know, my comrades that said, I'll be out by Christmas, you know, when Christmas would come and go, their heart would break. They'd get defeated. And I think we can, I think we can understand that, right? As we think, gosh, I've been struggling with this for months or years or whatever it is. And I shouldn't be feeling like this this long. Well, who's sad? You know, um, and and it, you're right. It's we can get stuck in the injustice of it. We can become injustice collectors and and think this shouldn't have happened and this isn't fair. And it's it's not. It's not fair that we're going through this. Uh, like I said, many of us are in this predicament because we simply took something as prescribed and it, it just didn't work for us. Um, that said, we are where we are. We've got to do the best we can with it. And I think that quote, you know, hope is not a strategy. That is not our strategy in this. Uh, Our strategy is how to remain vertical and breathing. Our strategy is what can we learn? What are some things we can do um, to to learn how to help ourselves when we have a nervous system um, dysregulation, when we have a nervous system that's on fire, when we have such a heightened nervous system that we're in, in such distress. And, um, and so hope is, hope is not our strategy. Hope is part of the equation. We will get better. I know that. And there's hope in that, but there's also reality in that. But today's not that day. It wasn't that day today. I'm quite certain probably I'm not going to wake up with a miraculous recovery tomorrow. That would be awesome, but I'm not banking on it. Why? Because I don't want the day to end and to be desperate again and disillusioned. Um, another quote that I love comes from Shawshank Redemption and it's Red, if you remember Red, Morgan Freeman. And he says, get busy living or get busy dying. And I think about that a lot in this because sometimes it's really hard to know how to get busy living in this when it feels like everything I knew about living has changed you know living might have been just having freedom to get up and go to work and and run errands and be with friends and family and make decisions on the spot and make plans and you know and you know anticipate that future right and a lot of that has been taken away um i've lost a lot of that temporarily and so what does it mean to get busy living? And I think, again, to get busy living in this, we have to learn a new way to live. And maybe that'll be my next video is what does that look like? Because a lot of people have asked me, okay, like now what? Like what are some things we can do like practically for the vagus nerve? What are some things we can do, you know, to help ourselves? And, you know, I always talk about mindset, but I think outside of mindset, there are some practical things we can think about. And I'll kind of go over some of that probably in the next video at some point in the near future. But get busy living or get busy dying. You know, for nine months in 2021, I was pretty busy dying. 
And what I mean by that is not literally, I wasn't literally dying, although it felt like I was, but I, I was kind of laying in wait for health to find me. I was laying in wait. Everyone just kept saying, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter what you do. It's just time. I actually don't fully buy into that. And that does not mean that I don't think time is the biggest factor in this for healing. I do think time is the biggest factor in this for healing, but I don't think it's just time. I do think your mindset matters. I do think what you do with that time matters because what I also know about human behavior is if I spend four years waiting for health to come back to me, but in those four years, I develop a series of really bad habits, bad sleep habits, bad dietary habits, bad mindset, bad attitude, bad thinking, whatever. Just like anybody else in life who's non-benzo injured, they're going to have to do work to reverse and work through some of the bad habits they've they've implemented. So get busy living or get busy dying. I was busy dying in the sense that I was laying in wait, waiting for health to find me again and pick me back up and pick up my pieces. And at some point I realized like that is probably not how this is going to go. Yes, if I wait this out, I will eventually get better. I do believe that. But if in the meantime, I am chasing rabbit holes and and spending hours on forums scaring myself and, you know, freaking myself out with, with, with looking up every ailment that, that's, that, you know, possibly, you know, comes my way or every thought, every feeling, every sensation, then I'm creating bad habits. If I, you know, don't take advantage of the moments that are, or it's at least possible to engage life in some manner, then I'm getting really good in avoidance well, people that get really good in avoidance that aren't benzo injured become agoraphobic. They come mo- become monophobic, afraid of being alone. They become afraid of going out and leaving their safe space. They become all they become paralyzed by their anxiety because they be, have be, they've basically moved into avoidance. And that's what was happening to me over those nine months. Is as I laid in wait and was and was suffering tremendously, I was also getting really good at not engaging life. And we get good at what we practice, right? We got to be careful what we practice. And we got to be careful that we're not watering the weeds. And for nine months, I watered the weeds. I had negative thoughts. I, I had catastrophic ideas about things. And I was watering the weeds every day. Well, guess what? I got good at it. So get busy living or get busy dying by Red and Shawshank. It's another one of my favorites. Um, this is not a movie quote, but I like this one by, um, by FDR. It's when you come to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. And I think that's a good one for us too. Cause a lot of times we do feel like we're at the end of our rope and we don't know what else to do. And I like that idea of, okay, if all I can do is tie a knot and hang on today, if all I can do is tie a knot and, and hang on in this moment, in this hour, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I have to throw a Dolly quote in here cause Dolly Parton is my girl. And I love her. Um, and she's a million wonderful quotes, but one that I love is the way I see it is if you want the rainbow, you gotta put up with the rain. Now, I did not know that the rain could be, you know, like toxic rain or acid rain. That's kind of the rainstorm we're getting, right? Uh, I didn't realize rain could hurt this bad or be this or or could rain this long, you know. Um, but I do believe in what Dolly says, because I actually do believe that that good will come out of this. As you've heard me talk in other videos or when I've been interviewed by people, I really do believe that good comes out of this. I can already see it in myself as when I get the glimpses of myself or windows, my priorities are are very different. The way I engage the world is different. I I really have no desire to... um, to water the weeds in my life, um, to look at or to listen to gossip, you know, or a low level discourse. Um, I'm very careful and try to operate with a lot of integrity with my word. I think I tried to do that before, but now integrity means something very different to me. And that is one of the changes I have found that has come for me already in this, even though I'm 
still in the middle of it. And I'm, I'm, I still have, you know, some good moments and, and then lots of struggle. Um, but speaking of integrity, that comes to one of my other favorite quotes from the movie Hoosiers. And it was Coach Norman Dale. And I don't know if you ever saw Hoosiers, but it's a basketball movie about a high school team in Indiana. It's based on a true story. It's a great movie if you haven't seen it. And I actually had this quote put on a big piece of wood that I hung in my I had in my office at one point. And the quote just simply is, my team is on the floor. And what this meant was, if you, if you haven't seen the movie, he has this basketball team. And he's kind of an unpopular basketball coach. He's The way he's coaching this team, the town doesn't like. And um, he's making the boys play the way he wants them to play as a team. And he's in charge. And he knows what he's doing. And he, he doesn't want, you know, them making shots just because they can make them. There's a way that he wants to run his team. And one of the players decides that he's going to kind of do his own thing and not listen. And he pulls him out. And there's nobody left to go in. There's only four players. And so the guy, you know, the kid getting pulled out, the fifth player, thinks he's going to stay on because he has to stay on because there's nobody else to put in. And C- Coach Dale pulls him out anyway. And the ref comes over to him and says, Coach, you only got four players on the court. And Coach Dale said, my team is on the floor. And I loved that quote because as the, as the crowds booed him and threw things at him and hated him, he was operating with integrity. And how this applies, I loved, this was my favorite quote before I got sick because it's so hard to challenge ourselves to operate with integrity in life in general. But I think in this, my team is on the floor comes to a new meaning for me in that there have been times in this process where I've had to kind of stand alone and say what I need. You know, I've had to tell my friends who care about me um, and, and, and people that care about me who want the best for me, who thought the best thing for me might be to go to rehab to rapidly taper off or to be cold turkeyed or to do a phenobarbital taper or to take more medicines or to go inpatient or to whatever it was. There have been lots and lots of things that I've been told by people who care about me and also people that, you know, were are in the know supposedly doctors and and, and people and I've had to say, no, I, I'm go- I'm not going to do that. This is my nervous system. And I've, I've listened and it's not worked and I've got to learn my own nervous system now because nobody else is responsible for it but me. I house my nervous system. And so I have to operate with, with a lot of integrity in protecting my nervous system from all the forces out there, whether it's stress, whether it's people telling me what to do, people telling me go faster, go slower, add this, do it this way, you're doing it wrong, you'll never heal if you don't do this. And I've had to stand alone, as have many of you. And like I said, one of the greatest ironies in this is we have to have the most trust and integrity with ourselves at a time when we feel the most fragile and the least trusting of ourselves and probably the least the least um, integrity. And what I mean by integrity is not just morality and that type of thing. I'm talking about wholeness, a sense of yourself. That's what I mean by integrity. When Coach Norman Dale said, my team is on the floor, he was standing true to his word and he was believing what he believed for himself and he was believing in himself. And that's one of the things that I think is hard for us in this is we have to do the same thing at a time when we feel the least um, kind of loyal to ourselves because we don't even know ourselves half the time. So my team is on the floor has come to have new meaning for me. And I don't like being my own expert on myself. I never wanted to be that. I wanted, I still want the fantasy of the of the person in the white coat coming in and telling me what to do and it's going to work, but it hasn't worked. And I don't blame anybody for that. I don't know why it hasn't worked. I, I don't know why I had the reaction to the fluoroquinolone when thousands don't. I don't know why I had the reaction to the benzo. I don't know why my nervous system is the way that it is. It doesn't matter. It just matters that it is what it is and, I, and that I've come to accept it and that I've come to accept the responsibility that I house it 
which comes to, to another quote that I read on a billboard that I've talked about before, which is, if you don't take care of your body, where will I live? It was a quote on a freeway that I saw one time. If I don't take care of my body, where will I live? Well, we're not in this position most likely because we didn't take care of our bodies. We're usually in this position because we tried to take care of our bodies and minds by taking something that somebody said might be good for us or would help us. But now we're in a position where we have to think about that differently. And if we don't take care of our bodies, where will we live? And and what's important in that statement is, is that we're in charge, okay? We have to be our own advocates. We have to be the one to stand there like Coach Norman Dale while the rest of the stands, our families are going, what are you doing? This is crazy. Get off that crap or don't take this or do this or go faster or it's been so long. Or, and yet we have to be the one to stand there and to say, this is my nervous system. Just like it was his team. And this is what I have to do for me, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not. It is the right, it is the best decision I can make for myself right now. I may, it may prove to not be the right one, but that's not the goal. The goal is to continue to try to do the right thing with the right information we have at the time for ourselves. And only we know our own nervous systems. And then I'll end with one more. Um, well, I'll end with two more. One of my clients, long-time clients that I, beloved clients, was um, in AA. This is a long time ago. And she would always come in, and if she was really struggling with her mental health, she would say, I've got to remember to just do the next thing. And if I can, do the next right thing. And that's what we have to do, too. It's that vertical and breathing thing. We just have to do the next thing. Okay, it may just be, in the, I just have to figure out for this moment, for this hour, for this day, for this night, for this week, for this weekend, what is the next thing that I need to do? Do I need to get up and, 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 and make myself something to eat? Do I need to take a shower? Do I need to, what, what is possible? And what's the next right thing for me to do? And then I'll end with Dory from Finding Nemo. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. And that's exactly it. We just got to keep swimming, right? And, you know, I think as we enter into this new year, I hope these quotes are helpful. I just wanted to kind of come on and, and I guess, you know, for my own sake, I think try to look at this, next year this next day this next moment this next hour these next this next hour and a half of this year of 2022 and recognize that um yes i did not want this is not how i would have scripted my life this is not how i would want to be feeling on new year's eve of 2022 but it's how i'm feeling on new year's eve of 2022 and i would imagine that around the world right now in this very moment there are plenty of people that are having a hell of a good time out there right now. And there are also a lot of people that are really suffering, just like us, maybe worse than us. And so, you know, I'm grateful that in this moment, I know what I've got. I know that I have a nervous system that is destabilized. I know when I have physical pain, mental pain, weird thoughts, weird sensations, weird feelings, when I'm feeling weak, when I'm feeling scared, when I'm feeling irrational fear, I'm grateful that I know what's going on. I I wish it would go away. I wish it would resolve faster. But I am grateful that I know what's happening and that I can tell myself, you know, this is, this is what this is. We know what this is. This is a, this is a nervous system that is hurting a heightened hurting nervous system, period. End of story. We don't have to dig any deeper. And I'm grateful for that going into this new year. I wish you guys the best. And thanks as always for listening and take good care.